All right, in college football, Aztecs got another road win, beating New Mexico State 31-10. SDSU off to a 3-0 start, heading into Mountain West play. NBC7's Derek Togerson went one-on-one -on -one with Aztecs head coach Rocky Long to recap yesterday's win and preview next week's contest. Running the football. Two backs had 100 yards. Is that a product of the fact that you guys had a 24-point lead at one point and you're running the ball a lot in the second half or the running game was simply working? Well, I think we have some good running backs. We have some skilled running backs, but mostly it's the guys up front. If they block well up front, we can run the ball. And if you get a lead, you want to run the ball and run the clock and get first downs and get out of there with the win. But our offense did a nice job blocking up front, and the running backs got to do what they do. How about balance on offense? You hear guys in the NFL talk about balance. You know, Phillip Rivers says we're best when we're balanced. You find that balance a bit more on offense. How is that working now for your offensive play callers? That you really can go go either way when you when you need to get a chunk of yardage. Well, the key with the spread and a lot of people are running it is just pure numbers. If you have too many people in the box to run the ball, you have to be able to throw it. If they put too many guys in coverage, you have to be able to run it. So it's a pure numbers deal, but it's an execution that the offense has to perform in order to have that kind of balance. Because he knows making plays all over the field on defense, too. How, how much of a leader has he become on that defense? Well, he's a great player and obviously leads by example as well as other ways, too. But as long as he's playing well and playing hard, they seem to follow his lead. And uh, a 3-0 start, the importance of going 4-0, I believe it was 2017, he started 6-0. Um, how do you build and stack wins on top of each other? And can you start to feel that momentum building for San Diego State right now? Well, the, the trick is to take each week at a time. I mean, that sounds cliche, but it is cliche. You can't worry about the game after this one. You've got to worry about this game. You can't worry about the game you just played. You've got to worry about this game. And this one's a big one because I think it's the best team in the conference coming in here. All right, Derek heard from one Aztec. Now we catch up with another. John David Wicker joining us. Appreciate your time. Thanks for coming in. Absolutely happy to be here today on Sunday. Uh, interesting fact about your football program. Only two teams in the country undefeated with two road wins and a victory over Power 5 program. Oklahoma State is one of them. San Diego State is the other. What do you think about the, the start for Rocky Long and the guys? I think it's been a great start, obviously. We're really excited. It's always good to go on the road and get a Power 5 win. And to be 3-0 and coming into a really important home game is, is a good place to be. You mentioned that one. Big one coming up on Saturday. First Mountain West game of the season. You got Utah State coming in, SDCCU Stadium, under the lights. How much are you looking forward to that one? Really looking forward to that one. You know, I hope the fans will come out, 7.30 kick. Utah State has a chance to be the best team on our schedule. Uh, they've definitely got a potential NFL quarterback playing for them in Jordan Love. So it's going to be a great test for our defense. Curious what your thoughts were. Rocky Long was asked about season ticket sales going down. And his response partially was with the stadium like we have, people can come in last minute and get a good seat. But I feel like the underlying message was he's ready for that new stadium. Can you give us any update on that process? Yeah, definitely ready for a new stadium, uh, and it, it will definitely compel people to buy season tickets. But we're moving along. We're having great conversations with the city. We're progressing with our EIR, and we're progressing with the design of the stadium. So hopefully we'll be ready to go with a shovel in the ground uh, early next year. Yeah, it'll be cool to see. All right, last week, the big news coming out of the state of California, SB 206, uh, passed unanimously by the Senate. Now Governor Gavin Newsom will have a chance uh, to pass that bill which would give college athletes in the state of California an opportunity, and we were just talking about it, to profit off their name, image, and likeness. The NCAA sent a message to Newsom urging him not to pass that bill. Curious what your reaction was, because this is something that could cause a pretty major shift and then cause some awkwardness between the NCAA and schools in the state of California. I think the big thing is the NCAA is currently working on name, image, and likeness. We have a working group that's been working on this since uh, early, late spring, early summer. We'll come out with recommendations in October. And again, the NCAA is, it's 1,100 schools over 50 states. And the frustration is when the state of California tries to do something on its own, then it creates some negative ramifications for the, for the schools within the state of California. So our goal would be allow the NCAA to do their work, craft legislation for name, image, and likeness, and then go from there. If, if California is doing something that the NCAA is looking into, is there a possibility of them working together in other states like South Carolina, others that are interested in passing similar legislation, uh, again, to work with the NCAA to make this happen rather than NCAA saying, you guys pump the brakes on this and let us handle it in the background? We've been asking the state of California, the legislative body, uh, to do just that. And we haven't made any headway with them, which is very unfortunate. So hopefully Governor Newsom will 
uh, allow us to do that, and he'll hold the bill and allow us to do our work, and then they can come back and revisit it if it's something they're not satisfied with. What's the worst case scenario that you'd obviously like to avoid if the bill gets passed and then suddenly schools in California are, are put in a position where the NCAA doesn't approve of, of what they're doing, what their student athletes are able to do in terms of profiting off their likeness? Well, if, if you get to 2023 and you have a student athlete who goes out and you know somehow gets a sponsorship or whatever it may be and it doesn't fit within the rules of the NCAA then that student athletes ineligible to play and if we as an institution said well no the state law says they can play and we try to play them then we as the institution would be ineligible so we couldn't play in championships basketball tournaments those types of things and then schools outside of California would look at us as, as having potentially you know a leg up on them so they potentially wouldn't schedule us. It seemed like something was bound to happen you kind of touched on it there I mean the NCAA was looking into this given the current climate and the conversations that are happening we were going to go down this road eventually correct? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think you look back, cost of attendance got passed five or six years ago. Uh, you know, there's more freedom to feed our student athletes more and more, better nutritional opportunities, and now name, image, and likeness. It's not like the NCAA hasn't been progressing. It's just not at some people's pace um, that they'd like to see. I mean, it's the, it's the instant gratification world where I can type something into Google, and in 1.1 seconds, I can have the answer. So it takes time when you're dealing with 1,100 different institutions. Yeah, and a lot left to be answered now. Yes. Uh, going forward. J.D. Wicker, appreciate the time. Thanks for coming in, and best of luck, Utah State, coming up on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. 7.30, plenty of tickets. You can go to goaztecs.com. Uh, show up 5 o'clock. Aztec Village opens. There's a lot to do pregame, and it's going to be a great game on the field. Yeah, chance to go 4-0 and for the Aztecs. Absolutely. Go Aztecs.